Welcome to Beyond. Uh, joining us today is Bill Bacco, and Bill's an entrepreneur, dreamer, visionary, and he's putting his mark on the skincare world. Producer of the BB Lifestyle Show, Bill has created the BB Lifestyle to inspire others to enjoy their life by taking care of their health inside and out. From a young man with skin issues to an entrepreneur dedicated to dermatological skin care, uh, Bill has quickly re redefined the business of natural-based products that deliver derm uh, dermatological grade results. See that five times. Yeah, yeah I know, right? right. <laughs> Thank you for having yeah, me. Bill, thanks for coming on the show. Yes, um, absolutely. You know, we had a chance to talk at a, um, an event recently, and I really enjoyed hearing your story and your vision and how you thought about the world. And you really have some really interesting stories, I do know. Yes. <laughs> um, and you're really branding to um, a different clientele for sure. Yes. Um, they have very refined taste. They have very high expectations of, of you know, you know, value, quality, et cetera. Um, but before we jump into that, uh, take us back to your earlier years and how this all got started for you. What started it for Bill early on in your life? Well, um, obviously, you know, with skincare, I never thought in a million years I'll be in skincare. Yeah. You know, it's just something I loved. I wanted to be a doctor, but I love chemistry. So, uh, so, but the doctor thing didn't wind up happening because I wound up going into the business world at 16, working with um, a builder, you know, and working with the CEO at 16 years old and kind of shadowing everything that he wanted. So I kind of fell in love with the business aspect, but I still had the medical love. Mm -hmm. So, but growing up and, you know, like a lot of people, they have skin issues. And when you have skin issues, it's really tough at a young age and at any age. And, but being 16, 17 and you break out, but the thing is that was different than what I had was it wasn't just getting pimples or anything. I was allergic to a lot of foods and a lot of chemicals. Mm. So I would touch something and I would get a rash on my skin or my face or I couldn't just use anything. And one big problem was sunscreen. I do have dark hair and darker eyes, but I burn within 10 minutes of being in the sun. Mm. So I needed to use sunscreen every day, but I use sunscreen makes me break out, I get a rash, itchy, you know, I, I can break out within seconds. So I'm like, I gotta figure something out because this, is, this isn't working. And you know, say number one anti-aging product you can use is sunscreen, mm -hmm. you know, because you need to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. There's skin cancer, there's a lot of things out there. So starting really young, um, I met other people with skin issues that have rosacea or lupus or psoriasis or anything that triggers. So I was like, okay, I'm not the only person out there with skin issues. So kind of started dabbling and thinking of what I needed and I met this chemist. So at 16, you're working with a builder who's a CEO, yes. giving you some business acumen. Yeah. And then you take us on a journey where a few years later you were? Well, no, 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 I was kind of, I worked for them for eight years, okay. you know, 16, kind of like running around and yeah. learning business and how you have to conduct yourself and being super professional because when you're working with the CEO and the presidents of the company and right. you're 16, you better know how to act or, you know. It's, it's a short Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. They're all like, don't be around us. <laughs> right. So I was taught how to really, you know, listen not say too much because you have to really listen to who you're talking to and then reply to what they're asking mm -hmm. and then just work really hard because to get to those positions isn't easy these people work seven days a week all the time they're constantly thinking and because the fact is like i always learned when you're on the top like that you don't just think of yourself you have many people below you that count on you mm -hmm. you know from suppliers to employees to you know your own family so I'm like, oh, okay. I've always been kind of driven like that where I am I like to take care of people for some reason. I'm always like, if you need help or anything, I was always that, that person. That was a gift to be able to work for that group for eight years. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it, and it's an international company. So um, from there, I was still in college and I went into telecommunication. So I was working at a mobile store just started out, you know, my friends all, can you come help me out? I'm like, I hate sales. So she goes, can you just watch the store? This is, we're new to the business of the thing. We have a lot of merchandise. I'm like, fine. Within the first year, I became number one salesperson. <laughs> and then over 113 stores, they opened up, became managers, became one of the top managers, and then started, had my own three stores within so four wait, years. You said you hated sales. I hated sales. And it turned out you're a rock star in sales. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, I never thought of it as sales. I just thought of it as giving what somebody's asking for. Listening, first mm -hmm. of all, 
what do you need? And then I'll tell you exactly what it is. You don't want to buy it. You don't want to buy it. I don't care. I was that person, you know? <laughs> I mean, I want to give you what you want because, right. A, I don't like getting, you know, any type of argument or confrontation. I'm not that person. Two, like by selling somebody that, something that they don't want. Two, I'm like, just give them what they want. You're going to be happy. I'm going to be happy. And then you'll have a customer forever if you give them exactly what you want at the beginning. And learning that I could sell them something really inexpensive at the beginning, but in the long run, will become a huge client. Yeah. yeah. So when you work like that and you understand and you're kind of like, you know, I'm going to be honest with these people. And, you know, I'm not saying salespeople are not honest or whatever because I'm a salesperson. It's just different degrees of how people want to conduct their business. And experience yeah, and everything. Process. Yeah, and so the whole thing is like, I'll always tell you exactly what this is. It's up to you to buy it or not buy it. Right. You know, and then starting into the skincare industry, I want to sell to the hardest people ever. We're doctors because I don't have a reputation at this point. I was like 24, 25, and I started, and I'm just like, if I sell to the doctors, they don't care who I am. You know, I don't have a reputation. I'm a kid, really. I look like I was 12. I was so tiny and little, skinny. And so it was theirs. So I had to, to be, to prove myself, I had to make sure they looked good. Not me, they looked right. good. Yeah. So when somebody went in and said, I have a skincare problem and they're using my products, they had to be what they say that they are. Mm -hmm. And they're actually going to do what they say. And that's the whole thing. Do what you say. So take us back. You had this yeah. um, incredible experience from 16 to 24, roughly. Mm -hmm. Then you go into telecommunications and just rock it. Yeah. So for the audience, can you share any setbacks or challenges along the way that you, you experienced in that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing. It's like nothing's easy. To get to a, from point A to point B is super tough. It's just the fact that there's two ways of doing it. A lot of people sit there and complain every bit of the way. Mm -hmm. Oh, this isn't fair. This isn't right. This person did this. That person did. And that. whoever said life was fair? No, right? never, <laughs> never, <laughs> never. <laughs> right. So, um, so you just have to kind of fight really hard because there's people that are not as nice and could set you back. Could take. I've had self-starting businesses ever since I was 18. Little businesses where I've had people in the industry that kind of took my business mm. and used it. For something else and kind of took me out of it so i learned really hard that you got to keep working super hard and not and this is i'm not giving out names that's why because people are still around um and that's on them you know don't give them any more credit yeah and not not you know and not giving them any more credit to the yeah. way they behave in business so how did that fuel your passions i mean as an entrepreneur you had some some tough lessons along yeah. the way you're passionate about the small business you're putting all your heart and soul into it yeah. and somebody just takes it How'd that fuel your perspective? Because some people, yeah. like you said, could say, forget about it. I'm just going to nag, complain, be yeah. depressed. Or yeah. you can rise above and say, lesson learned. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing. It's just protecting yourself. But I never forgot to, to be the nice guy. Because you know, everybody says, you're the nice guy, you're the nice guy, you're the nice guy. And nice guys don't fill it, finish first. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, ethically, in my, in my eyes, everybody has their own version of ethics and the way they do stuff. Is, yes, I could be a good honest businessman and work hard and you know what you learn something and that's where contracts come to place you know you learn contracts that okay if i'm going to do this let's do a contract it's no longer a handshake unfortunately you know i've i grew up with handshakes or just a word like this is what's going to happen you know um i was uh my my father passed away when i was nine but the what I remembered with him when I was a child, like at nine years old, I mean, I mean five years old, because he was sick for a very long time, um, that when he said something, he told me, and this is one of the only things I kind of remember, he said, if I tell you something, I won't ever promise you anything that I can't keep. Mm -hmm. You know, my promise. Mm -hmm. So when I was a kid, I used to love cars, matchboxes. So he would say, listen, I'm, you're going to go get a shot from the doctor. And for every shot that you get without crying, <laughs> you know, I'll buy you five, ma five matchboxes. Oh, wow. Five for one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I remember the doctor <laughs> saying, like, once I have to take three shots, and they're all like, this kid's unbelievable. They're like, he's not flinching. Dude, I'm getting 15 cars, <laughs> I'm like, cars, I'm getting 15 man. cars. Yeah. And so that's the whole thing. I remembered. I'm like, I, he never told me anything. There was never a surprise. So I knew what I was expecting. This is, it's not going to tickle. But, you know, if you do, you know, it's not as bad as it, you know, I'm going to make it seem. As a kid, you think, oh, my God, this needle's going into my arm and stuff. Explained it. You know what? It's going to pinch for 
literally two seconds right. and it's gonna be gone right you know but you can be this you can be tough and you know we'll get you some matchboxes hey i'd rather have those matchboxes the, they last way longer than the pain, the pain yeah, right absolutely so i kind of learned that at an early age like i won't promise anyone anything i can't do and if there's something that i will try i'll go i'm going to try my higher this i don't i i can't guarantee you but you know i'm going to give it my full effort and so that's what i I learned, you know, it was never like empty promises. I've gotten a lot of empty promises. I bet you did get through the years, you know, people promise you the world. Oh, we'll do this. We're going to get this. We'll have this great deal. With and I don't like that. Yeah, I think with family, it's, it's my word is my bond. But I, I think when you get into business um, and I've started a company, you have to have contracts. Yeah. And I'm going through some definitive agreements right now where yeah. there's like eight documents yeah. and you have to have that in place. It's Absolutely. for the investor, for you. And unfortunately, that's the world we live in. But you know, the, the, the important thing is you learn some lessons along the way and you can apply you know, a nice blend. Your dad gave you some great, you know, um, parenting advice or experiences because, Foundation. yeah, I mean, because that's the legacy you want to leave. That's yeah. the kind of man you want to be. Yeah. But when it comes to the money and the business part, you just got to have that blended balance of I'm protected. But it doesn't mean forward facing your customer. You can't show up and say, hey, my, my word is my bond. You yeah. don't have to worry about anything. And they know yeah. that that's why you're yeah. successful. Yeah. And it's not saying like somebody broke the, the, their agreement or their part, there's circumstances to everything. Sure. And it's a lot easier for somebody to quit something if they don't have anything holding them back. Right. It's easy to go, eh, I don't feel like doing it anymore. If they have no skin in the game. Yeah. yeah. What's yeah, it yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> the whole thing is that's why, and even we you know within friends, I've had friends and family go into business together and they come and ask me for stuff. And I'm like, listen, I won't talk to either of you if there's not some sort of, just a simple contract that says who does what yeah, and you smart. move forward. Yeah. And it saved a lot of grief with oh, yeah. people in the, because I've seen it both ways. Yep. And, I'm, and the thing is, the problem is when you're either related to both sides or friends with both sides or one or each, they both come to right. you and you're, you're like, you have to pick. And I don't want to pick, <laughs> right. you know? I'm like, that's your guys' yeah. deal. But people want to go, you know, you're my friend. No, you're my cousin or you're my this. So that's where I kind of learned that, you know, and it doesn't have to be so crazy. Uh, people think it has to be so intricate in this. Sometimes simple contracts are the best. It kind of, because you can look back and go, oh, I have to do this. I promise to do this. And that's the only thing, you know, and that's how I try to live my life, you know, as easy as possible, you know, in business that whoever you're working with will let you, you know. No, that's, that, that's great. That's sage advice. So. Take us back. We were talking before you came on set. You've mm -hmm. been to some really cool parties. Yes. Um, some Oscar, I don't know, what were the parties? like? Emmys, Emmys. Oscar party, like events, so what everything. Was that, what was that party you met Prince? I thought it was really fascinating. Okay, so one of my... Got to hear the story. <laughs> so um, that was an interesting party because it was my very first huge... I mean, I've been to other parties, but this was like the creme of the creme on top because it was Entertainment Tonight mm -hmm. Emmy party. Mm -hmm. So every major celebrity, and this is going back like 15 years ago, maybe a little more, thinking maybe 17 years ago. And um, we put our products in the bag. And so I'm kind of like, this is amazing. I'm like looking like every major star, supermodel, this, that. I'm like, whoa, you know, this is amazing. And I'm at the Sky Bar in Hollywood. And they look about the same in person as they do on the screen or a little different. Oh, a lot of people look different. Yeah. Somebody like you thought was like five foot ten, it was like five foot one, you right. know? <laughs> you know, it's like, it's amazing. But um, so I met so many people through the, some incredible people, but I was kind of in like uh, Prince was going to perform. So they put this huge stage up on the, uh, over the pool. There's this little nook that I kind of stood in between two big planters where I got a great view. And I'm like, no one's going to bug me, no one's saying. So I'm just kind of standing there. And then all of a sudden, right before the performance, they bring and stick Prince within this four foot <laughs> little. So your shoulders no. are touching. Or yeah, pretty much. Pretty his much. shoulders touching your yeah, stomach yeah, or yeah. something. Because I looked over and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, Prince is right there. And he's not saying anything. I'm not saying anything. We're just looking at each other, just like nicely smiling at each other. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, this is one of, the, at the point, one of the biggest stars in the world. And sure. still, you know, I'm, until his passing. Yeah. And until now people, still worship, uh, you know, his music and, and So him. you were saying that he was kind of on the shy side. I mean, he wasn't this yes. outgoing, 
no. in that way he was very reserved. And yeah, and that's what I kind of learned in Hollywood how a lot of people are, and even in business, a lot of people are, are very shy in business. I mean, you have to go out there and turn it on when you need to, but in your day to day, you could be very shy. I was very, very introverted as a child. Mm -hmm. And even till now, sometimes I'll go to somewhere and just be just observing. And I love to observe people and watch people and see what happens. And just by observing this, I had one of the biggest superstars in history kind of sit standing next to me. So how many minutes was he standing there before? <laughs> like 15 minutes. Like 15 minutes we stood there without saying a word. It was the funniest thing. And then they came and took him and he was on stage with them like. And then all of a sudden he flips a switch and. Oh, and two and a half hour amazing concert. I mean, killing it. People are like just losing their minds, having the best time. That was probably one of the best parties. And I've been to a lot of parties yeah. around the world and in Hollywood. And that was probably one of the most very, very memorable experiment uh, experiences where you're next to a superstar but wasn't with 20 security guards wasn't with um i i have another story if you want to know it's kind of crazy yeah okay so now's the time to tell it there was an era there was something in the air during that time so i went to a nylon magazine party it was called nylon magazine i don't know if it's still around mm -hmm. and it's a big music magazine so it was up uh, at this place called uh white lotus a club that's it's not there anymore off of either la cienega or one of those places so i'm there you know i had you know uh somebody with me and me and her kind of just kind of dancing and everything and uh little kim was on the cover <laughs> of this magazine so um, she comes in and there's a reason why they call her little Kim she's tiny you know and all I saw was 10 bodyguards pushing everybody through they stick her up on the DJ uh, stand and I'm like oh wow and then she goes and puts her song on and you know she's having a great time and all of a sudden you hear all this commotion she jumps off the stage right jumps off the stage and all these bodyguards are pushing everybody they pop her right in front of me. <laughs> you know, it was me, her, uh, the girl I was with, and another girl dancing with little Kim, 10 bodyguards around it, and three cameras on us. <laughs> you made one of her music videos? No, no, it was just a party and okay. stuff. And I took photos of her while we're dancing. So she was posing for me, and it was not a cell phone. It was That's a camera crazy. camera. Yeah. yeah, so I saw the photos. Which Did she talk to you? Was she friendly? Or? I mean, there was just, she was, was just, just smiling. I mean, yeah. she was sitting there smiling, taking photos. I mean, I was like a foot away from her. I mean, I'm around 10 gigantic bodyguards, three cameras, and the four of us are dancing together in a circle. So it was kind of, <laughs> I'm like, how does this happen? And yeah. that's kind of my life. I have such an extreme, I can be at home having pizza, watching a movie by myself to, you know, jumping on a helicopter with a friend of mine because she says, let's do a photo shoot up there, you know, nice. with your products. So yeah. I, my life is so extreme, but I think it's super important to kind of be, you just have to be good to people and mm -hmm. really cool and fun things will come toward I your way, you know, I agree with that. even like this, I'm like, we just met at a yeah. Party at John Verbatos and you we know, had a very the, compelling story and it still stuck. You can just bond. Day. You yeah. just have to be kind of open and honest with people. Yeah. And you start. We got the bees going. You know, yeah. you're a BB. I'm a BB. That's you right. know, so <laughs> you bond, and you never know who you bond with. That's right. And you wind up becoming friends, and that's the amazing part of life. Is if you're open, and you don't have to be one of those people that are completely open and doing all this crazy stuff. Because I'm more on the private. Side side a lot of the time yeah. I'll show you on my Instagram and my Facebook like what I'm doing just to show people what I'm experiencing I love to show people all these different experiences and um, well dance with little Kim kind of ranks up there I think right kind right of Instagram yeah. story. and the yeah. thing is I just saw a friend of mine with her at dinner the other day so I'm like I'm gonna call her up and go tell her do you remember the skinny white guy dancing with you at the nylon magazine party you know so that's it, awesome yeah so that was uh, probably like 16 years ago also 16 or 17. yeah right wow. crazy yeah, yeah. Who would think? Like, you would never think. I'm a little kid from New Jersey, you know, dancing with Little Kim and standing next to Prince, like yeah. icons. Yeah, you know? no, I mean, those are, I mean, what, what great opportunities in life, like snapshot yeah. moments. Yeah. You'll never forget that. Oh, that absolutely. Moment in time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's what makes it so cool. You yeah. Know? You get this little picture in your mind where you were. Let alone, I got a picture of Little Kim. <laughs> the only thing I wish I took a picture of being Prince, but there was no selfies back then. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you had a cell phone back then, right? 
Uh, I had a cell phone, but they didn't take photos. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I've had a cell phone since I was 18. So, so let's go back to your um, kind of your business. Um, it, you yeah. know, it's been said that uh, necessity is the mother of invention, right? Mm -hmm. You struggle with skin sensitivities and allergies that took an yeah. emotional toll. Yeah. Um, so how did this impact your decision to start your first skincare system? Well, that's the thing. I needed a sunscreen. I went and I was buying. And there's nothing on the market at that point that was really without giving you irritation or problems. And th I, there was one sunscreen I was using and I was paying when I was 18. You're talking, you know, almost 30 years ago. I was paying $85 for a bottle of sunscreen, you know, that was thick. It was heavy. It just coated my face. But it was something that didn't make me break out and it was probably a titanium or zinc oxide mix mm -hmm. but it was just thick it was just i can't go out looking like that but i would be you're like okay i'll tolerate it if i'm at the beach or by the pool because i i don't want to burn and i don't want to break out but everyday sunscreen where you need it to protect yourself against you was it working for you yeah no it wasn't and i was paying a ton of money i mean who pays 85 dollars back then for sunscreen. That's a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, so I thought the more money I spent on products, I thought that's what would be better. And the case is, is you really have to find brands that care about their ingredients. They don't have to be the most expensive. And they are, and of course, you know, when brands are not as expensive, they, they, you just can't put the more expensive like ingredients for sensitive skin and all that in them. It just doesn't. In my in my eyes, I don't think. So you clearly saw a gap. It wasn't yeah. working for you. There's nothing on the market. Mm -hmm. And then your chemist came out. Yeah. And you. Yeah. And, and then, you because as I read your story, you then came up with a formulation that's plant based, that's healthy to the environment. Yeah, it's a mix of wow. science and nature. But how'd that happen? I mean, how'd you come across that solution or that recipe? Well, I met this chemist and I told him I wanted something that didn't make me break out, wasn't heavy, wasn't greasy, didn't like all the stuff. And he stood there and he goes, mm, you shouldn't be in my office. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, that's not very nice. Is he a dermatologist? And, no, he's a chemist. He's chemist. a world-renowned okay. chemist. But he goes, I'll give you something that will make your company because you, no one's come in here in the last 25 years telling me make, gave me all these demands and didn't care about the price of the bottom line. Just make me something that works. And he goes, that was refreshing. So he goes, I'll make you something that's phenomenal. And he did. And he did. Yeah. Wow. And still, did you patent it? You, you can't really patent formulas. I mean, you could, but you know the way it's uh, your ingredient panel is on there. Was this your first or your current company? My first company. Okay. And then that formula, of course, um, you constantly have to modify and add and change, and you can bring more botanicals in and everything. And with this company that we're doing now, we added you know hemp CBD in it with no THC and everything, which actually elevated you know, the sunscreen that we have now to a whole nother level because hemp CBD is just amazing for anti-inflammatory, acne, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So you're even taking it. So you have to always, even if you have something amazing, you can't just be satisfied 100% all the time when it comes to uh, scientific and formulas. So it's like medicine. this is amazing to me. You see the need. Mm -hmm. You've got competitors that are multi-billion dollar companies yeah. selling mm -hmm you know, their stuff, yeah. and you'd think they'd have a, a focus group that says there's a big segment that needs a different solution, but they never did. Well, there's How tons do you of brands. I mean, I, 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 I mean, don't were you know. shocked that like, we're coming across something that's not on the market by any stretch? I mean, was there anything close to what yeah, you guys? Well, that's why I thought I was the only one out there because until you start talking to people, you know, and back in the day, um, I used to teach aesthetic classes, uh, schools, so estheticians learning how to, so, and that, like 15, 18 years ago, I used to go, how many people have sensitive skin? And you'd probably get 10% of the school, I mean class. So if you have 50 people, five people, and I go hypersensitive skin, I wouldn't get one or one in every 30 classes I taught. Now you go in there, who has sensitive skin? It's maybe over 60%, mm -hmm. and hypersensitive skin is 10 to 20%. Mm -hmm. And this is, I don't know if it's environment, lifestyle, stress, everything could add to it. So people are becoming more and more and more. And there are some great brands out there, um, out there now and everything that do different things, different technology, different stuff. It's just how you 
create your, you cook. Like, there's a million restaurants out there, but you don't eat at the same restaurant. It's just the way the chef does it. And the way you create your products, the way we do it, is a certain layering and a certain combination of the way we do it. And um, that makes it so special, the texture, the feel. I'm so do really you then take this and try it on different types of skin types? Oh, absolutely. Is that, is that pretty intensive? Like, uh, Yeah, I've never tested on animals. No. I was always cruelty free. But, like, but is this again. like... Take it through the FDA review process? Oh, yeah, or? yeah, yeah, absolutely. You have to hire an FDA uh, lab, a red, like a certified lab, to test your products. Okay. And you can do different testing on it. And we test on different skin types and different age and, and different ranges of skin. Some people test their sunscreens on just people that really don't react to anything. They can put anything on their skin. Mm -hmm. I look for people that burn within like two minutes of being out to, to 10 minutes to this. Mm -hmm. And then we also. Um, have our own focus group that I have doctors, skin estheticians, different people in different races. I test from 18 to 70, and I test Hispanic, uh, African American, Asian, and American, uh, like Caucasian skin. What about and pediatrics? What about oh, yeah, 18? We, uh, oh, yeah, we always do that. Our sunscreen is made for six months and older. So we always test. That's a big, big part of me because I have a huge family. I have, if I don't have my products on my family members and I can't trust that, then don't buy my products. If right. it's not in my shower or I'm not using it, I'm using something else, you know, come tap me on the shoulder and go, is there a reason? We got a credibility <laughs> yeah, crisis yeah, yeah, yeah. here. What's, What's going, going on? on? Yeah. <laughs> and that's the whole thing. It's just yeah. like I have to, I test on my different friends and family that I trust. And like I said, I never want anyone to come back to me and go, well, this did, you know. Yeah. I, you can't get 100% of everybody out there. I try to get 99 Mm -hmm. You know, um, you can't be that, um, I would say, cocky and think that I can get everybody, everybody's going to love you. It's not You're, realistic. No, no, no. Yeah. It's not. It's not. You got to really um, listen and get feedback. And it's not, you don't, you put your ego to check because if my end result is to make people like me that has, like anyone that had, you know, acne or oily skin or any type of skin rash or anything like that, you really want to help them. Absolutely. So you have to listen to people. You can't be, you know, no one has all the answers. Well, I'll tell you, the biggest thing that'll keep your ego in check is that we, in the medical device world, yeah. we have this thing called customer requirements. Yeah. And if you really don't understand what the customer wants, you go out and commercialize it and they don't buy it, just look in the mirror. Yeah. And that's a great ego check because you're not going to get any sales. Yeah. So the idea that you really do your spade work, your homework yeah. to really understand um, what the feedback is, is it working, is it, you know, yeah. whatever, the, whatever the factors you think are important, yeah. um, that's, that's uh, really important. Yeah, because people Saves work money hard. too. Yeah, and people yeah. work and, you know, they're spending their money on you. They're investing in you as a company, as a person on everything. So I appreciate every single person that purchases my product from the first time, the first person that ever purchased my product till now, I still get excited when somebody says, oh, I use your product. Like, yeah. I've never heard that before. I, it's, well, it's like you're being in a personal relationship with somebody because that's something yeah. that is on their body. And they trust you. And they trust you. They trust that's, you. That's and that's then the, and when somebody says, oh my God, I had this and this. This is the only thing I can use now. I love this. Uh, you know, this makes me feel so good. It just fuels your heart because there's something that you're doing that's helping people even yeah. when you don't think you're helping a person just randomly. My products yeah. are sold, you know, they're selling around the world now. So I'm like, somewhere across the earth, somewhere, Someone's is buying it. my products and actually enjoying it and loving them. And so that just makes you feel good. So let's tell, talk more about your company, BB Lifestyle, your newest creation. Yes. You had your other company. Yes. Now you're coming out with BB Lifestyle. Yeah. Um, tell us about your company and the products you offer specifically. So we have, um, and the reason why we can't uh, we named the company BB, and it was actually not my first <laughs> choice because I usually am behind the scenes, but I do have such a kind of interesting and kind of crazy life that's so extreme that everybody's like, you gotta name it. People know you. Everybody puts you with your products. They don't know like I everywhere for the last 22 years. Anything that's named. Like Paul Mitchell. Or yeah, I mean, it just becomes you. And because I do carry, like, every time a new product is, like, created, it's like, oh, my God, it's a but child. But isn't that a more personal way to market and brand something where it's like, oh, yeah. it's this guy. Yeah. He stands behind it. Mm -hmm. It's his personal. I think people connect to that. Yeah, absolutely. And we have a performance line and a luxury line. And the way I think about it is, don't get me wrong, I love luxury. <laughs> love luxury. <laughs> you know, I like to be pampered and stuff. But I always say, 
luxury can be, you know, anything. Like, I think a luxury is, you know, going out with my friends and hanging out, having a nice dinner. That's a luxury. It doesn't have to be staying at a five-star hotel, you know, driving a spa, Bugatti or driving a Bentley. And hey, it's all amazing, though. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I love both. But, you know, whatever your luxury is. And I always say, well, pick whatever your luxury is. Just, I'll give you, I'll show you what I think different things of luxury, and then you assess what you think is luxury. And same thing with performance. Some people are hardcore athletes. I have some insane athletes that I'm like, their bodies do things that I'm like, I think you're part machine that you can run like 600 miles, or you could do this, or swim across the ocean. But I think performance could be also if somebody that you love holding hands and walking down the beach right down over there, that's a performance. Or on the first date, you're nervous as hell. Yeah, yeah. So you're just like kind of walking, you're walking and you're enjoying life and that's yeah. your performance. So I kind of just show a little bit of my life, a little bit of other people's life in my life and just kind of go assess it. Create your own luxury and performance. And that's why the products are kind of split that way. We have eight products right now. We have six more launching next month. Um, and what Which are these products? Funny. Like walk us through. On uh, we have sunscreens. Mm -hmm. We have face washes. Mm -hmm. We have, um, what do we have? We have a, a recovery gel, which is phenomenal after any type of procedure or burn or scratch or just calming down the skin. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our pain reliever, which is amazing, you know, because who, with CBD, like yeah. who doesn't hurt themselves all the time? Like they say 120 million people um, you know, have back problems, mm -hmm. you know? So you want something that penetrates, works, everything. And it's coming from me because I've had my share injuries and then we have moisturizers, but um, things that are coming uh, out are, we have this black tea for puffiness and tired eyes. You know, who doesn't? You're looking at the screen, you're looking at your phone, you're right. working late, you're not sleeping, you're partying or whatever. You're puffy as like a blowfish, so it's always <laughs> important to uh, you know have something to take down the puffiness. And so we have a serum coming out with hyaluronic acid and peptides, mm -hmm. and we have some body lotions and a couple of other um, uh, serums that are coming out also. And they all yeah. manufactured here, or everything's made in uh, California. Okay. Um, like 18 years ago, I pulled back everything to the United States mm -hmm. that I could. Uh, tubes, boxes, labels, the products, everything's made in the United States. We had some things coming from Italy, um, things that we couldn't get here that the U.S. doesn't have companies that manufacture certain bottles and stuff, unfortunately. Um, but I tried to do whatever I can to bring down, back business to the United States, especially during the recession. It was so important because um, I wasn't a huge company, but whatever I could do can literally go down the line. like. If I can employ more people, they can buy more things. Absolutely. I mean, down to getting a coffee in the morning, that yeah. person needs their job. So uh, that's the way I thought of it. And I was always into regulations, making sure we were uh, cruelty free. We got PETA approved. Our new products are PETA and Leaping Bunny approved. Just in case you want this bunny or that bunny, I got them both covered. You got both bunnies covered. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're <laughs> vegan, and so that which is super important to a lot of people nowadays. Absolutely. Yeah. So you also are a producer of the BB um, Lifestyle Show. Yeah. So what is the content of the series focused on? Well, uh, it's on Connect TV, okay. and it is Connect is basically a network, an online network where they feature. Uh, people doing good stuff, you know, and, you know, a lot of charity events, they do entertainment, they do um, just a lot of um, self-help. And so the owner of Connect TV basically came to me and they're all, well, it's kind of interesting. I've, you know, we've seen a lot of people do skincare online and it's very like specific. It's, um, Basically, there wasn't a guy like me just talking about the straight on. You know, I'll tell you exactly. I have the medical background and this. I make it very user friendly for men and women, and just kind of explain it. You know, if you need have a medical question, I'll try to find out and I'll answer. Plus, making it just super simple, and that's the whole thing about it. I've always liked things to be super simple without being too hard to understand. Right. So um, we, he said, you know, I have this show, and I think it would be great to do procedures like in the health because I have the medical background being with doctors for 20 years and doing lifestyle stuff. So basically I've done um, 
PRP injections, you know, uh, I'll explain that, the, you know, the injections where they take your blood, spin it, mm -hmm. and inject it back in your face or head. I had my face injected on live time, and I do it on live time, there's no edits. So as, you know, the nurse is crunching through my right, skull, right. it's like crack, crack, crack. <laughs> you know, I almost lost a couple of, uh, you know, cameramen <laughs> while right. doing there was a, They're all like, I'm like uh, it's teetering a little yeah. bit. But it just shows people, you know, you could just do a bunch of different things, especially in men. A lot of men are still shy. It's almost 2020, and they want to look good. And why not? You have this one face, one body, everything, and why not take care of it? Right. So I just kind of make it super simple and go, look, this is the way it is. This is the healing aspect of it. I use my products right afterwards so you can kind of see what mm -hmm. I'm using. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's no like, oh, one day I, mean, I started getting something, the needle's coming close to me, then all of a sudden my face is right. perfect. You take them on that journey. And I tell them step by step how it is. And then we do lifestyle stuff, anywhere from tasting tequila to driving, you know, racing cars. So it just kind of makes it fun and just to bring people into what I do in my free time. And what you're passionate <laughs> about. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So let's switch gears. What advice would you give your 25 year old self? Uh, that's kind of interesting because there's so much. I'm like, A, you know, be a little more aware as far as not everybody. Is your friend you know mm -hmm. and you know be trusting but don't be stupid you know trust and, but verify yes yeah. very much and always work hard you know that was that's always something I'm like if you work hard things will happen you know and treat people well because yeah. people never forget and don't get some people I've always learned where you know if something doesn't work out like in business some people get really mad they're just like, they're pissed off at the person. And it's circumstances. Circumstances are circumstances, you know? And not everybody knows everything that is what's on your side, you right. know? Somebody's like, why didn't I get that deal? It could be that, it could be anything. Sometimes it's not the best excuse or the, the best intention, but sometimes it just doesn't happen. But if you leave it on a positive note, like, you know, hopefully there's something. I've had deals that were stalled for 10 years, 10 years later did an amazing deal. Mm -hmm. And this is because when we left the table the first time, there was no hard feelings. It was like, let's stay friends because our friendship was bonded at that point. Mm -hmm. And you never know what's gonna happen. It was actually better 10 years later, right. you know? So that's the way I see it. And you know- So it's just taking the long view, taking the longer view and sort of flying the plane at 30,000 feet. Yeah. Because if you're flying the weeds, it always is, is a yeah. bad experience. Treat, get, and treat people lot, well, yeah. and treat people yeah. well. You know, you can't think it's all about you all the time because you'll need somebody someday, you know? And that one person that you think that you, they will never have anything to do with your life can swoop in at the right per time and Absolutely. change your life like that. Absolutely. Yeah. So. And you know, today's uh, culture, it's very toxic and and challenging. I think a lot of people have, uh, they're, they're quick to react. Mm -hmm. um, they're quick to, to be offended. Um, yes. And it's not a criticism. It's just being aware about what the tendencies are and, mm -hmm. and having enough wisdom, I'd call it, to, you know, when you're dealing with somebody, you know, maybe the deal didn't go through because it's the best thing that ever happened to you. Yeah. Because maybe if it did go through, it would have yeah. destroyed your life. You just don't yeah. know yeah. what you don't know. So Everything sometimes happens for a it happens for the right reasons, yeah. I think. Yeah. And that's okay. Let it flow. Yeah. You know, it's it'll if it's to be, it'll be. And if it's not, then that's okay. Yeah. And I really think bigger for you. You got to treat people dignity and respect. I've, I've thought about that often, mm -hmm. um, whether it be this show or anybody I meet. Mm -hmm. Everybody has an important story. Everybody's a person. And this divide in America is kind of laughable in a sense because yeah. it's all ginned up and concocted at some levels. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're getting people ginned up over the time of day. Yeah. And it's totally unnecessary because ultimately I think people want love, connection, mm -hmm. success, however they define it. Yeah. Um, they want to be respected. So give it to him. Yeah. Right. I see a guy go blown by me in the car. It's like, all right, man. Yeah. See you at the next light. Yeah. It's all yeah. good. Yeah. You know. And that's why. Or maybe he's going to the, you know, maybe he's going to the hospital. I mean, you just don't know what's going yeah. on in that person's world. So yeah. you just like, you know. Yeah. Give him grace. And that's the way I think about it too. You don't know what kind of day that person. Yeah. Everybody wakes up thinking that they're going to have a great day, but some people wake up and they'll have the worst day of their life, and some will have the best day of their life. Yeah. So you can't. Why would you sit there all day analyzing everybody? <laughs> you know, it's I don't. like it's yeah. like you have your own life, you know, just focus on that and you'll be fine. It's just a lot of people always like, what's that person doing? Why is that? And, and nothing always seems that something that looks amazing and perfect might not be amazing and perfect because there's a price for everything. 
Right. You know? And so I'm always like... But I have a theory to that, yeah. right? I have a theory that goes like this, that certain people vibrate at crazy. Mm -hmm. And they have to be dialed into crazy drama nuts. Yeah. That's where they're at home. That's where they're at peace. Yeah. Yeah, That's yeah. their... Their frequency, because oh. we're all vibrating at frequencies. Mm -hmm. And so I just think some people need that frequency. Yeah. And that's okay. You just got to recognize that that person is at that frequency. And maybe it doesn't vibrate at your frequency. Yeah. And maybe it's not the most helpful thing to you, right? Yeah. So. Maybe they only vibrate that great when you're in Vegas with them. Yeah. You know, that and then would be you my, take them and home, it's like, like yeah. oh my God, who is yeah. that person? Yeah, right? but that's what you want there. You know, right. you want to have a great time and somebody that takes you to the next level. But the thing is, it's just like, if you don't feel comfortable in a situation, you got to change it. Yeah. Where some people just 100%. stay and stay Great and stay. Advice. You know, it's just, you, you got to change it. You got to get stay, out stay, of it. Stay, stay, stay and die, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So what are one or two uh, recipes for success that you could offer the audience that if they took your advice mm -hmm. in their personal or professional life, it could just make a huge difference? Okay, so... Because with your experiences, you—I mean, you're—you've got some unique experiences. You don't come across people like you every day that's hung mm. with Prince or, yeah. <laughs> you know. So, <laughs> the thing is, I think I always go back to the core of this: treat people very well. I mean, you don't know people can make things really easy, you know. And people like you, you'll get a call out of nowhere, and somebody will just go, "You know what? I have this deal for you," because. You were so good to me back in that. that sure. You could do, and the thing is not, you don't want to you go, know, well, I gave you this, so I expect this back. Yeah. You know, it doesn't work like that. It could be something. Give without like, expectation. Yeah, just, yeah. just do something, throw in the ocean, and then it's like a message in the bottle. Because if it comes back, it could come back like, you know, with a, you know, big chest of gold in yeah. it. And so it's always how you treat people. You know, you treat people with respect. You treat people with kindness and you have to make sure that you don't think you're the only person in the world that matters, right. you know, and that's a big thing. If people think of others, you know, you always have to think of your, you have to take care of yourself. That's something important. You can't be completely selfless, you know, but you do have to think of others to make your life and you feel good that way mm -hmm. by helping others. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not all about what I could do. Because you can help this person, but this person will come out of nowhere mm -hmm. and be your savior on something else, you know. And um, another thing is like, do your homework. You know, you have to. You can't wing anything. Nothing you wing will come out and have substance, a foundation. Right. right. You know, you gotta you gotta put in your time. That one percent of one percent that they blink and. Things just, wow, things are amazing. This is so easy. I never thought business could be so easy, but that's that 1% of that 1%, you know? Everybody else has to work hard. You, you got to grind. Yeah, you have yeah. to, especially in business and sales, you know? Got to knock on a lot of doors. You can't just go, oh, oh, I'm here. I'm nice, you know? Hey, it's real. <laughs> yeah, We're yeah, good. Yeah. Go. What more do you want, yeah. you know? So that's the thing. You have to put in your time and don't think it comes easy for everybody. You know, not everybody will show their insights to you on social media so, and you know some people will every little thing I had a bad day I have a headache you know this happened to me you know this and this and this and I see that and I'm just like wow you know I mean it's, yeah. I mean if you want to be open like that that's great you know but other people can be going the same thing but will only try to show you the good because they want to be positive yeah you know I can have the worst day in the world but I will still be nice to people and kind to people if I if I mentally can't, you know, everybody has those days where you're just like, oh, this day, I, when is this day going to end? I'll go in my office, close the door. I don't want to be rude to anyone. I don't want to be mean yeah. to anyone. I won't take any calls or anything yeah. because why do I have to take it out on somebody else? Right. You know? Just work through it, process. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody has those days. Everybody, yeah. you know, no one's perfect. No one's tough. No one's like can get through anything. Everybody has their ups and downs. But, you know, whoever you are and whoever you think, just don't judge. I mean, it's not good to judge a lot of people. Yeah, it and doesn't a lot of help because it yeah. just comes back to you. Mm -hmm. People will leave your life, you know, it just yeah. doesn't help. People get mad at you yeah. when something, you know, and something, you know, but I'm like, I worked. I, I've been working since I was 16. I've had multiple jobs since I was a kid, you know. I don't remember not having more than two jobs if not a family business or, yeah. you know, working two jobs when I was 16 or working 80 hours a week in the summers. You know, I was working from 7 in the morning to 1 o'clock in the morning 
every day for nine months during, you know, when I was 16. Yeah, so that's the, impressive. You, you know, that's the whole thing. It's just like, it's, and I mean, I'm talking about summer also. So in the configuration, that's how it works. Um, uh, but you work seven days a week and then you have, you can afford nice things or yeah. do a thing, but that's what I'm, I'm putting my time in, right. you know, but everybody's, but everybody's different. Not everybody can do that. Not everybody wants to and do that. Has motivation. Yeah. But don't judge anyone yeah. to, if they like doing that or not do that. Yeah. Just let it be. What yeah. it is, 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 and it's yeah. just a waste of emotional energy. Makes all, what, seven and a half billion of us go yeah, around. Absolutely. <laughs> is there anything uh, you want to share with the audience that we haven't covered? Um, let's see. Just, I mean, just the whole thing is like, I mean, thank you for this opportunity. I mean, it's like, you know, you know, really nice of you to even have an interest, you know, um, it, it just always with adults, always look around and see if there's a teenager or somebody that asks a young person in business or something, you know, give them two minutes if they need a little bit of help. Because these people are the next entrepreneurs, right. business owners, right. you know, heads of companies like that. Just help people get to the next level. It's okay. There's room for all of us. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'll never sit here and bash any other company, you know, on public, this, that. Because, you know what, then I'm not confident in myself, you know. There's room for everybody in all types of business. Help them. Hopefully. Anytime I hear somebody bash a company, it's a big turnoff. I mean, that person, yeah. I, I mean, I look at that person like they haven't evolved. Yeah. Because you know, behind that company, they're bashing. There's people that are working hard, trying their best. They have, yeah. You know, yeah. families to feed. So yeah. that's always been. I know when I started out in sales, it's like you never talk trash in your competition. In fact, when I go in there, I'd say, oh, they did this, this, and this. Great. Yeah. You acknowledge it because I think yeah. it shows to the customer you're a bigger person, yeah. and that the pie is not. You know, you know, not fixed. Yeah, it's, it's ever expanding. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And that's the thing. It's just like you don't want. Um, I mean, you might not like everything. You can't like everything. You right. know, I don't like every restaurant. You don't like every right. type of clothing. You don't like. You don't like people. There's some people you just do not mesh well with. But the thing is, it's just like you just don't sit there and just bash just to bash. Yeah. You know, just to say you're... Because if you grind out, it'll just grind you down. Yeah. You're the one that gets worn out. Yeah. Because they don't know. They don't yeah. care. Yeah, you absolutely. May, you, it's like bitterness contain... Or what does it say? What's the word I heard one time I was saying? That um, bitterness um, destroys a container that contains it. Yeah. So if it's in you, they, the person doesn't necessarily know that you're feeling yeah. animosity. They don't care. Yeah. They're off living their life and you're you know, grinding on a, a negative. You just got to let it go. Yeah. And like I said, young people that are trying to work hard yeah. and, you know, take to the next level, if they ask you for some advice, give them some advice. Absolutely. It's not going to change your life. Yeah. They're not going to come and take over your business. <laughs> you know, I mean, they're, you know, if they're 12, you know, yeah. they got a lemonade stand or something. You're just like, <laughs> you know, I'm watching you. Yeah. You know, it doesn't work like that, you know. So that's the only thing. It's just like I've seen that with some um business owners that are so nice. I've seen them go like take their time and take if somebody comes, yeah, and just even just casually ask at a, a party, you know, yeah, somebody asking and so, and then I've seen people, they're all like, you know, like shut down right away and what are they gonna do there and take all my trade secrets. It doesn't work like that. No. You can, I can give two people the same recipe to cook something and it will come out differently. Absolutely. I can give you all the secrets to, you know, that lasagna, yeah. that amazing lasagna, but it won't come out the same. Exactly. So same thing in life. Doesn't mean that if I tell you everything exactly, it's going to come out perfectly. Yeah, it's like if you told someone how to fly, it doesn't mean they can go fly a plane. Yeah. Right? It takes a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Where can they learn more about you, Bill? Um, on bblifestyle.com. Okay. And then also on my Instagram, Bill Backo, and then bblifestyleofficial on Instagram also. Nice. Yeah. Bill, thanks for coming on. Thank Enjoy the you. Conversation. Thank you so much. You have some great stories. Yeah, I'm glad that we uh, yeah. bumped into each other at that party. See? Absolutely. Sometimes you just need to say hi. That's it. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. That's it from Beyond. Um, you can find us on beyondbenbobo.com on our website and, of course, on social media at Beyond Ben Bobo. Until next time, remember, becoming is better than being. <laughs> thanks for coming on again. Thank That's you. awesome.